Folks, it's never too late. It's never too late to say, Lord, I've been wrong about some things. And through your grace and through Christ, I can be transformed. I don't have to live in bondage anymore. The second principle that, that, that we learn from Matthew here in Jesus saying to him as Jesus is prejudicial towards emotional and spiritual bondage. He's prejudiced towards emotional and spiritual bondage. Folks are, folks are suffering from all kinds of bondages, even in the life of the church. Even in the life of the church. I have an opportunity to go to training sessions. I have an opportunity to be in ecumenical kind of, kind of places. And I, I, I'm telling you, folks, it's, it's very interesting sometimes. And not all, thank heavens, not all the leaders in our denomination are this way. But every now and then somebody will say something like, well, well, we're training people to be future pastors. What we want is we want Methodists. We want Methodist pastors. And I'm like, oh, I'm just sitting there thinking, oh, okay, what does that mean? And then somebody will ask the question, say, what do you mean by Methodist? I said, well, well, what we don't want is we don't want Baptist. I'm thinking, okay, we don't want Baptist. And so then I just, I can't be quiet anymore. I just can't. I had to raise my hand. And I said, Methodist from which century? And they said, well, modern Methodist. I said, well, I don't want to have anything to do with them. Because they don't know what in the Sam Hill they believe. Now, I want me some 18th century Methodism. I want John Wesley who will stand on top of his father's tombstone and preach in the open air so that some people might know Jesus Christ. I want to see the Oxford Club that gave up their lunch every day and fasted and prayed for the poor who went out and did ministry to people who were in marginal situations and seemed hopeless. I want a 19th century Methodism that circuit riders will go to every town and village throughout America. When people went west, the circuit riders went west. Some of them, the average age of the average circuit rider in America in the 1800s was 29 or 30. They died of cold. They died of starvation. They gave their lives to Jesus Christ trying to help other people find their way back to God. Give me some of those Methodists today. Give me some of those Methodists. But if you're talking about somebody pontificating in some statue of superiority because they think somehow their belief system is superior over other denominations, I say we better preach to them the gospel of Christ so they don't go to hell. Denomination ain't going to save you. Somebody asked John Wesley one time, said, are there going to be any Presbyterians in heaven? He said, no. Are there going to be any Lutherans? He said, heavens, no. He said, nor will there be any Roman Catholics nor Anabaptists. And I'm telling you, there's also not going to be any Methodist. It's only going to be followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. When, when, John Wesley, when John Wesley wrote the character of a Christian, they said, you need to change it to the character of a Methodist. But what Wesley wrote was, what does it mean to be a follower of Christ? And he says it means to have the love of God shed abroad in your heart towards all people. You see, if Christ has set you free from sin, then you automatically begin to have a love for all people. It, it takes time. Just as wandering off one or two degrees takes time, it also, through the grace of God, we can wander back to God and grow in his grace. Baby steps. Remember, you take a lot of BS at Christ Church. Take a lot of baby steps at Christ Church. Sometimes growing in grace is a process. Okay, you take steps in that direction. But he said we're to have the love of God shed abroad in our hearts so that we don't want any person to perish and spend a crisis eternity away from him. We want to have a heart for people. And, and we're part of a kingdom, folks. We're not, John Wesley was continually pointing people to a king, Jesus Christ, and his kingdom. It was always more about the kingdom. Yes, he was Anglican. He died an Anglican, believe it or not. He, did. he wasn't a Methodist. He birthed a denomination because he thought it was going to be passionate about reaching people and helping them come back to God through the grace of Jesus Christ. But he died an Anglican priest. He was proud of his Anglican roots. He just had a, a mourning spirit. He, he grieved that they didn't grieve for the hurt and that they didn't grieve for the poor and that they didn't grieve more for the lost. He said it this way. He said, the reason why we care so little for the poor is because we spend so little time with them. We spent more time with them. We care more for them. We care more for them. 